In today's video, we're going to be learning how to tie in the drone stocks on a hide bag. Stick around and find out. Well, hello, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel, I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below with your thoughts on uh, the stuff we're talking about and doing here. And uh, we're going on now to part two in my series about how to tie into a leather bag. Here I have a McKillop, excuse me, a McKillop Bagpipe Company uh, goat skin bag. Oh, it's pretty nice. It's riveted along the bottom. Um, last time, we measured and cut the holes. This time, we're going to be prepping and tying in the drone stocks. So what are we going to need here? Um, some sort of heavy-duty dowel or rod. I actually use this uh, metal bar that I, I drilled a hole into so I can tie the string through here. But uh, some sort of rod or a dowel would work well. I see people use hammers. I've even seen a guy use a pair of scissors. Uh, I don't like the idea of like throwing a hammer in my face or into a piece of furniture, but do what works for you. Uh, I'm gonna use this. I know that's not gonna break. And I have some artificial sinew here, which is super useful. And uh, what else do I need? I think that's about it for now, and a pair of scissors to, to cut it. So the first thing we need to do is prep um, the amount of artificial sinew we're gonna need to actually tie in this set of pipes. So I find it takes about an arm's length worth of uh, sinew to wrap a joint, and I tend to put this on doubled. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure it out. So there's one, two, three, four, five. That should be it, but I'm gonna double it. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. So that should be plenty for all the tying we're going to do for all five stocks. Just go ahead and cut that, get that out of the way. Now, whether it's a dowel or a rod, I tend to, to drill a hole through it to, rather than tying some sort of knot, but you could tie some sort of knot around it to attach it as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and fish this through and we're gonna fast forward because this always takes a moment or three. Okay, so I've gone ahead and gotten it through here. I'm going to go ahead, for me, I'm gonna find the halfway point. All right, so I'm gonna take both ends. I've fed it through the, the rod. I'm gonna take both ends together, and now I'm gonna start running them together through my hands so that we have the sinew doubled up. There we go, so now now I know it's it's part way. I got equal parts going through each side. Okay, so just a simple little knot in there. And now that's not going anywhere. And now we start wrapping. Nothing too exciting here. Kind of wrap it around, keep it nice and tight. We don't want it going anywhere. So there we go, now we have our rod or dowel with a doubled up artificial sinew on here, ready to tie in these stocks. Let's prep the stocks for tie-in. You can just use them empty and they can get all full of seasoning and goo. I don't really like that. I don't like having to take that much time. The blowpipe and channer, you're kind of stuck cleaning them out anyways, but there's no need to have to clean out your drones as well. So if you look at this one here, I've actually shoved a paper towel almost all the way down into it and it's held in place with a rubber stopper on the other side. Now, notice I got, uh, most of my stoppers are uh, this rubber color, orangey whatever color, but I do have one alternate colored stopper right here, a black one that I'm going to use for the middle tenor because as I say in many of my videos, I like to keep my middle tenor separate all the parts of it so they don't get mixed up. I like keeping all the vibrating parts of the wood together. If you don't have different colored stoppers, you can just get like a, a silver Sharpie or you could tie, put a piece of tape on it. There's any sorts of things you can do. Um, but I do recommend trying to keep your parts together because they're easy to get mixed up. So I just folded a paper towel up. I'm talking instead of 
about the wrong stuff. I just took like half a piece of paper towel and I'm just kind of folding it up so it'll fit nicely through the whole stock. I feed it down the stock until it comes out the other end most of the way. And then I go ahead and stopper up the top to hold it in place. Nice and firm. That's not going anywhere. And then I kind of bunch up the paper towel till it's just right there at the bottom. And you see just a little bit of seasoning is going to get the very bottom. The rest of the stock is going to stay nice and clean and it's going to be so much easier when it comes time to season these pipes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that to the base as well real quick. There we go. The base is done. This is also a great time right now too. If you're going from one hide bag to another, perfect time to clean out any extra seasoning or goo or whatever might be on here. Uh, if you want to treat this with wood beams or some other uh, material, you can uh, because you're not going to have access to the bottom part of these until next time you go to tie in. Now, there's nothing we can do for these two. We're going to have to use the blowpipe stock to inflate the bag here in a little bit. We're going to have to use the channer stock to actually pour the seasoning in. Um, and with these two, the channer stock's always the one that's slightly longer. I've tied them in wrong before, and it makes for some channer tuning issues if you got too small of a, a stock. So the stocks now are prepped and ready to go. So we're ready to move on to actually starting to tie in this pipe bag. We have one more thing to prepare. When I go to finish off one of these joints, I like to have a loop set up that I put under right at the beginning of the wrapping and I can pull the remaining sinew through that before tying off a couple of half hitches. It's just in a little bit of extra security to make sure that uh, nothing's getting untied. So I'm just taking a length of string and there's probably some great knots for this. I tend to just do a couple of overhand knots in a row. So I've tied one loop. Now I'm going to tie one part of the loop to the rest of it. One more. If you got a better knot for this, tell me, because it's something I want to be able to put some force on without having the knot slip. But I find a couple of our hand knots I've done are good. So I have my loop ready. So we'll talk about how to do this letter. But there was one more thing we needed to do. All right, let's actually do this. So I like to start with the bass drone. So we know it's going to be going, in my case, under the left arm. Most everyone's going to be going under their left arm. So we know that this hole right here is the base, the one inside towards you. So we're going to go ahead and feed the base through. Now, a lot of modern hide bags actually have a zipper. Then you don't have to feed it through some sort of swan neck like I'm doing right now. But if it doesn't, that could be the base drone through a swan neck can be rather contentious. You might actually want to soak the whole swan neck as well. This one has um, a rather large opening, actually. That's going to be interesting come time to tie in the channer stock. But for now, it actually is advantageous because it helps me get this base drone stock in. And the other thing, so the wet leather is a little stretchier. And then when it dries, it's going to pull back a little bit more. So that's going to help with these uh, keeping all of these nice and airtight when we're done because we want an airtight fitting between wood and leather. All right, so I got the stopper coming out of the hole now. So now I'm just going to start gently making sure I'm stretching the leather over this whole stop, this whole top, this whole drone piece. Okay. Now we have the whole ferrule coming out of the hole. So now again, I'm making like a ring with my fingers. I'm, I'm not putting pressure in one spot. I want to very evenly try to apply pressure on this as I kind of rock it back and forth down. And <clears throat> so if we look at one of these stocks right here, we want to make sure that the leather is a goodly little bit above that stock. We don't want it too high. That'll make it pucker way too much. But you don't want the leather anywhere really too near that joint right there, that, that grooved section where the, the tie-in string's really going to bite in. All right, and for full disclosure, even with it being 
stretched and everything else, we actually have just a small little tear because this stock is getting to be quite big as it's getting toward the bottom. Now, I don't see that being a problem because one of the other styles of cutting the holes is a star-shaped style. We're just going to make sure that that entirety of that little tear is well above the point where we're tying in. So even with it being wet and having soaked, it still tore the stock just a little bit. All right, and there we have it. I think, I think it's looking pretty good. So this is having to ride a little bit higher over here because of that, uh, that tear, which is still well above, yeah, the other section. And we're just gonna have to wait and see how it all plays out when it's all tied in. We're ready to actually start attaching this thing. All right, if you're finding that the stock is wanting to slip out too easily from the opening and it doesn't wanna stay in place, you may well need to use either some tape or what I've tended to do is actually use a hose clamp. Once I get that stock positioned where I want it, above the groove, the right height all the way around, if I'm wanting, and then you can go ahead, put your hose clamp in place. And I like um, these relatively thin hose clamps if you can find them. These standard hose clamps you're gonna get at auto parts stores tend to be a little bit thicker. As you can see here, the thickness difference. If you're gonna use one of these thicker ones, I would actually run the hose clamp slightly higher than the leather rather than even with it. Tighten that down and hold it in place with the hose clamp while I tie it in so that I don't have to worry about the stock coming out. On the back I'm tying in in this video, I don't have to worry about that. It's nice and snug, it's not going anywhere. If anything, as I've already said, the holes were a little too small. But if you find it the other way around, you might wanna hold it in place with something else while you wrap it. When you're done, you should be able to remove these um, because the wrapping itself should make it airtight. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna start with a bowlin. So it's a pretty common knot. I'll put a diagram up of a bowline knot, but I'm gonna make a loop overlap. So I do it, turn it so the part coming towards me is on top. I'm gonna to take the other two ends, go through the hole, back around, and back through. All right, so now we have a great bowline knot here, and that's going to let us, now I'm gonna turn this into a slip knot. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take the rest of it, and now you see this part wants to kind of hard to see, but the string itself now will pull itself tight over itself. So we're gonna put the loop down over it and I want it so that when I'm pulling toward me, it's tightening. And you kind of gotta just work it down with your fingers. You're going from something flat to something round. Those don't always wanna play nice together. Okay, I'm coming all the way around one more time. Okay, and now you can see so I've wrapped it around and I'm holding it tight right now in my hands. I got, I don't know, seven millimeters of leather coming up above the wrapping. I don't want this pulling through at any point. I don't want too much up above it either. Okay, so I'm gonna wind this down tighter. So we have our lovely little loop here. This is a great time now to kind of just let this loop lie underneath this whole thing. Because again, we're gonna use this to pull through later. In fact, if you wanna, let's go ahead and put the end of this in the stock so it's not quite as much in the way. So it's being held in place there. Pretty soon it'll be held in place at the bottom by the next round of wrapping. You can see the loop is underneath the wrapping and it's gonna be underneath all of the wrapping. When I'm done, I'm gonna pull this tight. I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to put one end through the bottom of this loop and then pull it all the way out and it's going to let the sinew have to slide under the existing wrapping and that's going to be super tight and then we're still going to tie a couple of half hitches. So I'm doing a couple of wraps and I'm pulling and I'm pulling not toward my face. I'm pulling across my body. I'm pulling this holding onto the stock. I'm pulling it that way. I'm pulling this that way and you have to you have to use a little bit of might here. Let's do a couple more wraps. Make sure that you always keep the loop under all the wraps. It's kind of easy to get it a little tangled. I tend to go two wraps at a time and then pull again. I can see the whole thing getting much tighter. All right, and I'm trying to see if I can turn it in the leather and I already can't. I'm gonna do another pass and another 
big pull and see what it does. All right, so how are we doing? That does not seem to want to turn. I'm gonna do one more for good measure because this is the bass drum. This is where we're gonna hold the instrument. This is where most of the force is going. So again, pulling this way and that way. So now I'm just holding it in place with my finger. I can see it's not moving. And yes, I'm a little out of breath. So now I'm going to take this extra bit right here, put it through this loop. Boom. Now let's go ahead and undo that. Stopper holding the other end so we can pull it through. And And if you do it right, it should be hard to pull this loop through because you have nice tight wrapping here. You might even need to put the loop on the dowel. There we go. All right, so it just pulled through. So I can see these parts from underneath. These were from the original knot. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them short, but not too short. I'm leaving about a centimeter. Yeah, a little more than a quarter inch. Now, with what's left, I'm gonna come around. All right, I cut myself off just a little less than I had anticipated. I tend to like to tie a half hitch when I'm done, but I'm not gonna lie, this looks like it's not going anywhere. So, now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the rest of the bag, and if the bag is airtight at these seams, what I'm going to do is put a dot of super glue right here at this point to keep and lock these things into place. Now, I'm a little out of breath. That was uh, quite a bit of work, but I can't imagine that's gonna go anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the next two. I'm gonna leave the camera rolling because if I have something smart to say or something dumb to say, uh, I want you to be able to, to hear it. I'll, I'll edit that in. All right, so now we'll talk about, uh, we'll come in. I'm gonna leave this a much longer tail. This was the thing I forgot last time because I wanna be able to tie a nice half hitch or two when I'm done. So again, like I said, this is kind of like a, some home repair projects you don't do very often. It's easy to forget a step or two. So this is where we will do that. Again, I'm feeding it through the loop. Let's see if I can get this better on camera. So I got the loop right here. I'm gonna feed this in under through the loop. And so now when I go to, I'm gonna take this loop out of the stopper where it was just kind of out of the way. I'm gonna see if I can pull it through. It's a little bit more how I'm used to it. And now it's sitting under there. I can go around and actually tie a couple of half hitches on here. So to do that, I'm gonna go all the way around, all the way around and then from underneath up and over and pull tight. And then looks like I had enough to do at least one more. And when I'm done with this, again, I'm going to, after I make sure these joints are all ready to go, they're all airtight after the seasoning process, I'm gonna put a dot of super glue on these knots so that I know they're not gonna move. All right, I'm gonna leave probably a good inch. I'll know where that's at. Let's leave a good inch down here. I probably cut the last ones a little short. And we have the drones all tied in and looking quite sharp. I think uh, that'll work nicely. And we're also gonna talk about what we can do to angle that blowpipe back towards your face. Now, this is a fitting that we may well have to do again, because there's not exactly a way to make sure it's right right now. So, but the long and short of it is, I'm gonna gather more material in the back than the front, and that's going to pull it this way. So if this is the back of the blowpipe, there'll be more leather coming up the backside than the front side, which will force it back toward my face. Um, and hopefully it works and hopefully it's at the right angle. I can't know though until the, uh, the channer stock is in and we inflate the whole thing, actually get the drones in there too and make sure everything's comfortable and we might have to redo it. If we do, no big deal, just how it goes. So it's nicely soaked. I'm going to go ahead and insert the blowpipe stock in through the, the neck. 
I've been in the land of synthetic bags now for, ooh, a decade or more. But uh, I just had the opportunity to, to help uh, teach at the Keeping Tradition Alive Symposium in Louisville, Texas. Uh, so this is May of 2019 right now. And the lead instructor was uh, just a, you know, kind of regular guy, Jack Lee was there as the main instructor. Super cool guy, super knowledgeable, super willing to answer any questions even from other instructors like myself. But uh, he did a great little workshop on tone and he talked about something I hadn't really considered which was kind of the conditioning of the air making it to your reed. Now I've known for a while that having a thicker skinned bag can go a long way to allowing you to blow more stably on the bag, squeeze more stably moreover. But I hadn't really considered the fact that in a synthetic bag, especially when you first start playing it, the air is quite dry. The only moisture is the moisture coming out from in your breath. And then we normally go through some sort of moisture control before it even makes it to the channel read. So you end up getting a relatively dry sound. If you combine that with lacking a uh, moist, you know, if you don't get your channel read moist, well, then you can get a rather brittle sound. And... Uh, I could kind of hear maybe just a little of that in my own playing. I'm, I'm quite happy with my tone, but then you hear Jack Lee play and you hear how that sounds. And well, if that doesn't inspire you to want to play better, then I don't know what can. So I realized I had one of these lovely goatskin bags at home. So I thought, no time like the present. All right, so I finally got this thing most of the way through. So, but these uh, Peter Henderson RG Hardy stocks are no joke. The outside diameter is actually slightly more than an inch and a half. So, note to future self, the one inch punch will work for many, many stocks, um, but it's a little small, I think, for uh, a stock uh, as big around at the base as these uh, Peter Hendersons. So I probably would have gone with, I don't know, an inch and an eighth, an inch and a quarter. You definitely want it smaller because you want some of this, this stretching, but even after all of that, I still, like every other one, I got just a little tear on here. And I'm going to go with user error on this one and uh, a little bit of lack of, of knowledge, which is why I'm making these videos, so you can learn from my mistakes, not just learn from me. So I know a lot, but I can always learn more. Okay, so we're going to try to get the front of this pretty close to the, the groove. we got a little bit more overall to go. Because again, we're going to try to angle this back toward her face. Because you don't want to have to be, you know, you're playing and that blowpipe pops out. It shouldn't be there. Now, there are things we can do to angle it back. That's another video. But in a perfect world, it should just be through the bag itself. All right. So, so again, I'm looking to have more material in the back of the blowpipe than the front of the blowpipe. So you can see here, though. The front of it is below the wrapping, and then as it goes up, it actually, or not the wrapping, the combing right there, it's slightly below it. I'm gonna bring it down just even a little bit more. And then as it goes toward the back, it goes kind of up past it, so there's more on the back. Again, that's going to help it angle backwards. So, we're ready to actually tie this thing in now. So again, we're gonna start with a, a bowling knot. Old trusty bowling. I'm gonna put a wrap or two around there and then I'm gonna put this pull through loop under all the rest of the wrapping after I start mail. I'll get one or two twists around there. I'm gonna put this underneath, wrap it the rest of the way and then pull the remaining through, leave a nice long tail so you can tie a couple of half hitches when you're done and you should be good. My RC's been running. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the whole video because I'm not gonna reshoot the rest of it. Boom, all right. So now I got quite a bit in the back, not terribly much in the front. So you can see in the back, I got a good bit. In the front, I got quite a bit less. I'm just taking that loop, putting it there. I kind of tuck the ends of it away underneath into the blowpipe stock. Now I'm gonna wrap it two more times, right in those grooves, and then give it a good solid pull. And when I'm pulling, again, I'm pulling across my body. I'm pulling this way, and that way, I'm not pulling into my face with anything. 
And I ain't getting any hint of twisting or anything here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave myself a nice long tail. I'm talking like 18 inches or something, like nice and long. You don't wanna not have enough. Tying a half hitch at the end gives you some real peace of mind that it's not just being held in place by the tension. So now I have my loop here that's been run under all of these, all that hemp or all that uh, sinew, excuse me. It's a lot of work. I'm gonna pull it under and through, take this out and uh, there it goes right through. So it's being held in place. I'm gonna do a half hitch. I'm gonna go around the top and under and over. We'll go ahead and do two of those under and over and Boom. Now I can give, wrap it around my hand, give it a nice pull. And when I'm all done, if this is airtight after I season it, and I know this joint hasn't failed, I'm going to hold that in place with a little dot of super glue when I'm done. It go a long way to give you some security. So now we're going to get rid of this tail right here. I'm going to leave, I don't know, an inch. Don't cut it too short. And so now we're ready to move on now to the final bad boy, the chanter stock. But that's going to be in the next video. So. I appreciate everyone's time. I hope you guys are finding this useful. Again, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper. If you are finding it useful, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be making videos like this on all sorts of bagpipe topics and there's tunes and everything else. So like the video, comment below with everything uh, you do differently than I do or any thoughts you have on the process that's going on. So anyways, until next time, guys. Cheers. <laughs>